Hey guys, what's up? This is OK Pop Justin. So today I'm going to be talking about the four apps you need to use before you go to Korea. And these four apps will actually really help you on traveling to any to any other one of the major cities in Korea. Since I only know uh, Seoul, I'm going to just be showing you some examples from these apps of that city. The first app that you should guys use is the Korea Subway app. And this one is actually very helpful because this app actually shows the entire visual map of the subway lines. And you can even choose one place to start off. Let's say if you want to depart from. And then maybe... Let's say go to Gangnam. Arrive there and it will calculate how many... which is the fastest? And which is are the fewest stops to take and also it mentions the fare as well as how many transfers and stations and how long it will take for you to actually get there and it gives you a visualization on the stops that you have to take to get to your destination app number two is actually Kakao Maps <laughs> for some of you who have not been to Korea before um, and you know, rely on Google Maps. Google Maps is not very reliable in Korea because of some like some sort of like uh, map laws or something like that with street view laws and all that stuff. So if you guys actually use Google Maps and you put like the street view, or it's a very outdated pictures of the locations that they show there. So Kakao Maps is more up to date. And it's actually very helpful for you in case you guys get lost and you can find things easily. And this also really helps since this app also works in English. It will also give you good street views and pretty much will show you a, vi a visualization to show like where you had where you want to find like a specific shop or a specific place you want to go to to go eat if you know the area very well. This will help you very well as well as I use this app as well for uh, taking uh, bus routes in case of like the location I want to go to is like far away from any station. So it will really help. Let's say for example you're in Hongi University and you want to go to And you want to go to some place, you know, like this gas station, for example. And there's also different ways of taking. So you can take a bus. There are seven ways to take this bus. Usually, it shows you see one, one bus, which will actually cost like around one dollar if you have the T Money app, and you don't need to use a subway. Even though the subway app can also help you with this as well, or you could use a subway or a bus there which I don't, I don't think you actually need one a bus would actually be better or a taxi to whichever one is good and then app number three which will actually help you a lot is neighbor dictionary okay, for some of you who want to go Korea but don't know the language or you are studying language or you don't know what the translation is for some places like of any science or like that this app will actually benefit you so you're like you go to translations and you want to know like better to translate something from Korean to English because English to Korean is not very 100% um, accurate so maybe in Korean it will help so let's say if you want to put um, I see my favorite barbecue place in Korea is Guiga and then when translate it will it will say Guiga but. <laughs> We also tell you other uh, translations like saying meat roasted, like ku i. Use also some example sentences to help you maybe know the translation better if it doesn't give you like an exact translation. So this will also help you a lot when you're in Korea because Google translates like eh, but um, this will surely help you in the long road. And for my last app that will really, really, actually it's really really good that you guys should use because I put this in the last one is Airbnb you already got your plane ticket 
and you want to know, oh, where should I stay in Korea? You of course need to know beforehand like where you want to stay. Airbnb is actually very helpful. It will actually tell you like which homes is best for you. If you're coming with like a group of people, for example, you could uh, get an entire house or an entire floor to yourself with your friends. Or you could also stay in an entire house and these houses are really good. It could be a house or an apartment. Sometimes luxury apartments too. Show you all these options and also it will give you uh, better pricings as well. There's many places to do that. And or if you wanna, let's say, go by yourself, you know. One person also adjusts like the type of budget you're in. It also help a lot. Also knowing if you want an entire place, an entire room or a shared room. If you want a private room, usually there are options like uh, like small residence or condominiums that you probably share with uh, other families or other people there as well. It will actually be good for many like cultural exchanges as well. But also if you want like a shared room, you probably it might show you probably hostels as well. As well as uh, in the private sector as well. Usually when I travel to Korea I like to go by myself and stay by myself sometimes so this will um be helpful and you have your own space to yourself and usually the places are very quiet and not very noisy it would be really good if you guys could find really good prices as well I would recommend this 100% than staying at a hotel for someone who was going on a budget to Korea you could also find it in a map location which is more convenient for you as well as something that I did not know in this app, besides booking a place to say you could also explore Seoul into doing tours and adventures to experience Korean culture. You can also take classes and workshops where you can see there's also like dance, Korean K-pop dance workshops or how to make kimchi. There's also like arts, food and drinks, nature walks, and also history stuff and nightlife. There's a lot of things to do in Seoul. Well, that's all the apps I want to show you that will help you guys. If you want to go to Korea, it will help you, benefit you into doing a lot of things and not to stress over on getting lost or not knowing what to do. Even though in Seoul you have so many things to do, if you already have like an interior already planned out, but for some people who want to take, you know, spontaneous trips or they just, you know, want to go but don't know what to do exactly, they could just use any of these apps I have, especially Airbnb will also help you very well. If you guys like this video, you can just give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of me, subscribe to my channel. And follow me on my social media links, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram on the description below. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Bye-bye.